Hey everybody, welcome to Big Valley Living. Thanks for coming and joining us. I'm Michelle. And I'm JJ. Well, we are going to make what I really wanted to can and I've been waiting and waiting. Uh, we're going to make pomegranate jelly tonight. And this is the first thing that I ever canned. JJ grew up in a canning house, so he had some experience. And this has been a really good year for pomegranates. We're going to show you how we peel them and everything. Um, we actually did this juice a few days ago. And when you make your own juice, which again, all the instructions will be following here. Um, the best thing to do if you want a really clear jelly is to um, put it in the refrigerator covered. And after you've strained it, what, two or three times? And let it sit. And, and just mm -hmm. let all of that drift to the bottom. So there's a little foam on top. But what I want to be able to hopefully show you is that there's about a half inch to an inch of sediment on the bottom. Um, this recipe is pretty straightforward. It is very full of sugar, so don't get scared. Um, it's just really important to have the clearest juice to start with, okay? If you do not have access to pomegranates, you can use a uh, commercially prepared juice. However, it can't have any sugar in it. It must be 100% pure pomegranate juice. Yeah, that's the only ingredient on the on the label. So yeah. um, you don't want any anything added. Just it says pomegranate juice. That's yeah. the ingredient. <laughs> so anyway, this is, I mean, like this is the video that we have been wanting to make since we started doing our YouTube channel. So I've been chomping at the bit to make this for you. We have peeled some pomegranates and for the sake of showing you how we prepare them for juicing, which is the next step. Oops. You put them through a strainer. If they don't all fit, then you can bring some. See, we'll just, yeah, that's going to fit. Set the pan off to the side. Now we're going to rinse them out real well and remove as much pith as possible. JJ, don't get pithy with me. Good. Just get the big pieces. Don't worry about, you know, all of the super tiny stuff. Um, but the less pith, the less bitter your base juice is going to be. Okay, next step is to put some of the arils in our blender. So we're going to turn our blender on. You can use any blender. You just, if you have a manual blender without a pulse feature, you'll want to have it on a fairly low speed and you're going to turn it on and off and you'll see why in a second. We just want to burst the arils to get the juice off of the, um, the little seeds. See how it's just breaking it down? Because we don't want to grind all the seeds into the juice. All we're doing is releasing the juice from the arils. An arrow is what you call a single pomegranate seed with the juice around that. Now, see, I just have it on one on this, uh, and I'm okay with that. And I see that they're mostly broken open. Not seeing a lot of um, juiciness around there. I don't know how to describe it, but this is how it should look. Now, 
Now get yourself a bowl that's somewhat wide and as deep as possible and um, have it ready. Now I'm going to take a strainer, uh, just a normal strainer, and we use flour, so flour sack cloths. Okay. We have to strain out the pith and everything else. That's what it looks like after it's blended. See that? Pour it into the lined cloth. It may take two passes. Don't waste any of that juiciness. You work too hard for that, kiddos. Couple notes. Um, you're gonna want to strain this out really well, okay? Be careful because this is like red grapes. It will stain in a heartbeat. So make sure that you don't spill it all over. And if you do, just wipe it up. Don't let it sit for any real amount of time. It'll take you forever to clean it up. Now, what I like to do is squeeze this out. Okay, you see all that? Isn't that nice? because we don't want to waste the seeds, and this will break the rest of the arils that didn't necessarily blend. You know, you're seeing juice going off to the side. As soon as I'm done, I'm gonna wipe that off, okay? There we go. You can just let this sit, but for the sake of getting it done, I'm gonna call it good. We have approximately three and a half to four cups. Now what we're gonna do is transfer it to a pitcher that's a you know, covered pitcher that's going to sit in the refrigerator overnight. This is a one quart juice jar and it holds four cups. So what we're doing right now is pouring the juice that we just strained into this. And remember it was about three and a half cups which is perfect. I am going to cover this, I'll put the lid on it, and I'm going to refrigerate it overnight. And then tomorrow we'll do step three. The moment of truth. So when you're making jelly, my suggestion is to have as tall of a pot as you can because um, juice that boils with sugar in it really hurts if it pops up at you. So what I'm going to do is add three and a half cups of strained pomegranate juice. And then I'm going to use one packet of MCP pectin. Um, in my opinion, for this jelly, this is the product that you want. Now we're gonna sprinkle that into the cold juice. And I'm going to turn it on high, but I'm going to whisk it while everything's cold. I got this recipe on the Sure Gel slash MCP, I just Googled MCP pomegranate jelly recipe. And this is the recipe that we have been using for over 20 years, maybe a little bit more. So you see it's a little bit fuzzy and it's, but it is clear and all of the pectin has dissolved now one thing that this recipe calls for and this might be a little bit rogue but it does cut down on the foam at the end is a quarter teaspoon no more of butter real butter okay. now we're gonna let the heat do its thing And if you notice, there are there's no foam, so that that butter does its job. Even cold. Okay, a few minutes later, and here we are. So, I stirred this while it came to a boil, and that's what it looks like. Now, you want to bring it to a boil where you can't stir it down. Okay, and that is where we are right now. 
At this point, I'm going to add five cups of sugar and I'm going to stir it really well. Note that I am using a bamboo or wooden utensil, it works the best. I'll have a link to the For Truly Tailored Designs. Christmas is coming, support your local small business, and if you don't have one, support mine. Okay, so I'm going to get this sugar dissolved. See how it just really melts very quickly. And you can see how absolutely gorgeous that is. Scrape that down. And the next step is that we're going to bring it back up to a boil that cannot be stirred. This is another really good reason to have a pot that's tall, okay? Because then when you go to boil it hard for two timed minutes, you are not going to have any doubt that it's going to creep up over the top. If you use a shallower pan, you do run the risk of that happening. The process of making a jelly is really quick, and once you get the hang of it, it doesn't uh, take long at all. If I wasn't filming this, it would take us, what, about a half hour to make six half pints. And um, I do want to note that we already have our water bath canner boiling in the background. And you want to make sure that when you put your jars in, that you're going to have one to two inches minimum. I, I like to have two inches, but you want to have that um, over the top of the jars when you're canning, because that's just part of the rules. So this is getting really hot, so I'll stop stirring for just a minute. Um, I do want to note too that if you have a slotted spoon or something like this with a hole in the center, when you're doing something like this, you can get more um, of the juice going through. And kind of like turns. turbulence. Yeah, it's really nice. So now our juice pectin sugar mixture is starting to boil. I want you to see what that looks like. It is extremely important that you continue to stir because it does have pectin in it, it does have sugar, and it will stick to the bottom of your pan. What we're gonna do is bring it to a hard rolling boil that cannot be stirred down. And as you can see, I'm stirring right now. I'm just gonna let this play so that you can see how it happens. See how it's coming to a rapid boil. And don't rush the process. I've found that if I said before it did something like this, oh, that's close, that it didn't like set. Okay, so JJ's going to start the timer now. We have two minutes at a rolling boil. You want to stir it constantly. The instructions are right in front of me. Can you believe it? And I've made how many half pints of this jelly? And there you have it. We had our full two minute rolling boil that we couldn't stir down. And now I'm gonna turn the heat off and I'm gonna get over to my canning station with this pan. Make sure that you have a trivet or something on your counter because uh, you, you don't want it to continue to boil while you're filling your jars. Well, here we are. We have our canning station all set up. So I have the jelly right here really hot jars uh, this will make six half pints so just in case for whatever reason the all the stars aligned properly I do have a seventh jar however in the event that we don't have that much left over I have this like half cup um, little cup thing that I can just put into the fridge and we could have it over toast or on some waffles or pancakes in the morning. I have my funnel. I have this nice little scoop, which is gonna get everything in there. I have my magnetic tool, which is going to pick up the lids as they go on. These lids were cleaned in hot soapy water. You do not need to leave them in hot water anymore. 
I really like this handy dandy unit here that my neighbor gave to me. You can find those, I'll put a link in the description for the biggest little kitchen store in Amador County if you do not have access to one. It's a really cool tool. So you can have the rings on top and the lids inside. Make sure that you clean it every time so that your lids stay clean. Um, I also have a jar lifter and that's gonna help me to, woo, to lift up the jar. And I have a little bit of vinegar and I'm gonna get some paper towels and have them at the ready because we always clean the jars after we fill them with uh, white vinegar to make sure that we have no debris between the jar and the brand new lid. You cannot use a lid more than once safely. So here we go. I'm so excited. You guys, this is really my favorite recipe to make. And we have lots of relatives who absolutely love getting this for Christmas every year. So this is quarter inch headspace. Clean. You can use a clean rag if you want. I have this nice tool that allows me to grab the jars when they're really hot because what we have is hot jars, hot jelly going into a pot with boiling water, okay? You never want to have anything cold going into hot water and you don't want anything hot going into a cold jar or anything cold going into a hot jar. sure jelly you know jelly has sugar and stuff so you really want to be careful that you don't see any color on your rag after you clean the tops you want to do these fingertip tight okay not too tight because there will be some air that needs to escape the jars but tight enough so that you can get a seal and then lid doesn't fall off, okay? On a quarter inch head space, you go to that top thread. So you can look at it and know that you have the right head space by using the rings on the jar. Uh, this recipe calls for a five minute boil. Processing time is what that's called. Okay, so this dual purpose canner has a lid that you can see through, which is actually a really cool feature. Um, that gauge you see on top is for when you're steam canning, and we'll do a steam canning video another time. I wanted to make this recipe the classic way that we always have. But as you can see, the water is at a full boil, and there is a very ample two inches of water over the top of those jars. That's really the perfect scenario. We now have the timer going for five minutes. Thanks a lot for joining us while we made our pomegranate jelly. Um, we had a bumper crop year, like we said at the beginning, so uh, I don't know how many we're gonna end up getting, but oh yeah. So I don't know if that shows up there. That's like looking through a ruby. Yeah. It's, it's really beautiful um, and it tastes amazing. It really does. And these have already sealed, so we're gonna, um, we're gonna go ahead and uh, yeah, so we'll be clean them off. Yep. Actually, yeah. here's a quick tip. If you're gonna send it to your family and, and all of that stuff, you know, don't have this thing real tight. Have it a little loose um, so that they can get the ring. But if it, if it unseals, um, this thing will make it so that it doesn't seal again. Mm -hmm. So you don't get a false seal and they don't get a false sense of security. Yeah. So just quick tip. All right. Well, thank you for visiting Big Valley Living. Um, if you like this, please share it with your friends and family. Give it a like. That's very helpful for us. Don't forget the bell. And consider subscribing. You can also see some of our um, short videos on TikTok. We just started doing that. And we post on Instagram and uh, we're developing a website. So Eventually, and then hopefully not too long, you'll be able to go to our website at bigvalleyliving.com and actually get uh, recipes that you can print out and use while you're in the kitchen trying uh, some of the things that we share with you. I think we covered everything. 
Yeah, I think so. I think all we have left is... Seven more five-gallon buckets to peel and make jelly. See you later, everybody. <laughs> Apparently, she's going to be ha or very busy. <laughs> I am. All right. Thanks again. Have a great night, everybody. See you later, everybody. Be kind. Whatever. Be kind. What's all this? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Come Leo. on. Leo.